Hello, everyone, and welcome to Education in Focus, powered by Chalkboard News. I'm Dan McCaleb, Vice President of News and Content at the Franklin News Foundation, publisher of ChalkboardNews.com. Chalkboard is a news website dedicated to issues related to K-12 through education. Joining me today on Education in Focus is Brendan Clary, Chalkboard's K-12 through editor. How are you, Brendan? I'm doing pretty well today, Dan. How about you? I am doing well, thank you. Brendan, high school graduation rates across the country this past school year, most generally saw significant rises. This has happened despite plummeting standardized testing scores, in large part because of remote learning during the COVID-19 pandemic. There seems to be a disconnect between those standardized test scores and graduation rates. Are are schools just graduating students even if many students aren't prepared? What's going on here? Yeah, I, I I had that exact same question myself, Dan. You know, we've seen, we've heard multiple times. I've re- I've reported multiple times for Chalkboard News about, um, you know, what the the student um, achievements seem to be, uh, academic achievement seems to be going down, and there hasn't been, you know, noticeable um, post pandemic recovery in you know a variety of national uh, exams in some you know, private exams that measure student achievement, you know, it's it's been a lot of bad news in terms of academic recovery after school closures due to the pandemic. So I was asking, you know, what if we've had these kinds of uh, deleterious effects on student achievement, then why are graduation rates uh, going up? And, you know, we have school districts, uh, Detroit, Chicago, um, you know, across the country saying, Here we have um, higher graduation rates because of uh, we have higher graduation rates in the years after COVID, right? And we've seen increases, and so that that just got me thinking. Like, why don't we try to like like our graduation rates a good metric for student preparedness? Like, how do we know that students are getting what they're supposed to be supposed to be getting or learning? You know, life skills based on how do we know that students are getting those kinds of information that they need for life? You know. college or just going right into the workforce right and so that that's what i was i was asking that same question and i spoke with a uh, researcher douglas harris uh, who is with the brookings institution and he's also with tulane university he's a professor there and he he did the, the work for me basically i mean he had he had looked into the graduation rates before covid and um you know there was some some changes in how the law emphasized graduation rates as a metric so that was uh um something that you know was a was a law in congress about you know we're going to start emphasizing that and he said that you know there was sort of a noticeable trend in this is what students should know this is you know sort of a way to demonstrate that students have an understanding of what's going on by graduation rates this, this actually was good for um you know students graduating high school with everything that they need for college or the workforce but then after the pandemic i mean he basically told me you know students were able to graduate because uh districts didn't want them to feel like they were being punished for something that was outside of their control so you know this he said either officially as it was in some states or unofficially you know, the standards were lowered. So students were able to graduate with without having to know everything that they needed to know in previous years. And he actually had an interesting uh, term for that. He called it COVID credentials, uh, Douglas Harris did. So I, you know, it's a very interesting sort of phenomenon of like, we're able to graduate students um, and they're not showing proficiency in some of these key areas. And the hard part about it is that it's sort of an apples to oranges comparison in terms of academic achievement and standardized testing versus graduation rates, which are more based on, oh, you did the courses that you needed to do, right? You graduated with so many classes in math, so many classes in science, so many classes in history, and um, you know, you you completed all those those things. That's not exactly the same as like, you know, you scored this much on a on a benchmark you know, you got a benchmark score on a standardized test that everybody in the state has to take. Um, but that's kind of the closest thing that we have to show proficiency, right? And so like we don't have a standardized test of this is what every high school student takes in the nation to see how much you know uh, after graduating. We don't have anything sort of like that. So we're, we're left with, you know, sort of a picture of what students know and don't know. And so you know, in some of those places, and I can let well, you get a word word in edgewise here in a second. But uh, <laughs> I got a couple questions for you. But yeah, yeah. Go ahead. But you know, I, I looked at Detroit, for example, where they they boasted, um, they they said, you know, we have had a higher graduation rate at specific high schools, and some of those specific high schools, they they you know did not meet 
uh, you know, most students who took the SAT did not meet the proficiency mark. You know, they were not meeting the, the what the state says students like, you know, the halfway point of like, this is what students should know um, to be to be proficient in there. I mean, a lot of students across the state didn't do that. But I mean, it was it was a very few percentage of those students, I think less than three or five at a certain high school that that were reaching that even though more of them are graduating than the year before. So it's sort of that that sort of disparity there of, you know, we have students going to college to the workforce leaving the high school, but, you know, maybe they know less than ever. So a few questions, Brendan, off of this, and we don't have a ton of time left, but I'm going to hit you with all these questions at once. And um, I don't expect you to have, you or anybody for that matter, to have concrete answers because this learning loss that that we experienced during COVID, still relatively new, not that, not not a lot of years worth of data um, behind it, but there's obviously been an impact of learning loss during the COVID era. So are these schools that are graduating students, whether they're prepared or not, are they doing a disservice? To the to these students by allowing them to move on, even though they're they're less prepared than their predecessors, are we are they doing a disservice? I don't know to the country as a whole because you're putting more and more you're graduating more and more students who aren't ready. These students are you know our country's future, so to speak, and are you know going to be hopefully getting jobs and important jobs that fuel the economy, etc. But the alternative too. Uh, and I know I'm hitting you here with a lot. The alternative would be for these schools not to graduate these students, to hold them back. And what does that mean for the schools themselves who might have a few hundred or even more additional students um, because you're going to have incoming freshmen uh, coming in. You've got your holding back uh, more graduating seniors. And what's it going to mean for space, for the number of teachers that are needed and taxpayers who have to pay for it. So I know I hit you with your a lot in one or two minutes, Brendan, if you could just uh, do your best. Yeah, I'll try. I'll try. Well, so I, I think you're right that there is sort of this, this catch 22 of like, you know, we can't, uh, how do, how do we send these, these students off if they haven't um, learned as much as they, they maybe should. And, but also like we can't do these school districts who are usually, you know, uh, swamped, you know, there, there's, they're, they're hurting for resources they're hurting for uh teachers that can you know help them and and tutors that can help students recover from you know learning loss how can we keep them back you know so that is sort of the impossible question i think that um you know what what douglas was telling me um, uh douglas harris was telling me you know is is there there's not a lot that the school districts felt like they could do during COVID because it was sort of this this thing that happens, you know, once in a century. Like, there was not a lot of precedent for it. And so there was sort of this this policy of, you know, we have to let the students go because we don't want them to feel like they're being pu- punished for something outside their control. But at the same time that, you know, I, maybe there will be sort of a, a marking, you know, like an asterisk, kind of like, oh, you graduated, you graduated uh, on 2022 or 2021. Like, maybe you need... And maybe maybe some of this will play out uh, in into the workforce. Like maybe there'll be a lot more remedial sort of um, you know companies that help train people into what they need they need to know. I, I mean, I'm not exactly sure. I think that th- right. this does have ramifications, but to see how it plays out, I think we're we're kind of continuing to see that unfold in how graduation rates have gone up and how different things are playing out. And um, it's actually in, uh, uh, Douglas Harris is, is um, and his team at, at Tulane and Brookings. There, there are they are looking into this and publishing a full paper later in the fall. So I hope to maybe follow up with him and kind of see what are they seeing, what are the ramifications for this. And I think we'll you know definitely want to keep looking into this at chalkboard of you know what is the impact of COVID on our society. You know, but where that that intersects with schools, because this is, you know, sort of the impossible question. Thank you for that, Brennan. Of course, we will continue to be covering this issue at ChalkboardNews.com. It is a, it, it's an extremely important one for students and their parents um, and et cetera, one that uh, uh, is not going away anytime soon. But we are out of time. For Brendan Clary, I'm Dan McCaleb. Please subscribe and thank you for listening.